you know, the Dell deal, I mean, obviously, you know, let's start, you know, Dell acquired EMC and VMware, right, the assets of VMware came along as part of the acquisition. Obviously, you know, for it, you have to look at it both just the simple math of the deal. And for it, you know, what's EMC's cash flow before the acquisition? You know, four and a half billion per year. Okay, what's the debt service on fifty billion dollars? You know, I mean, the average cost of debt was less than six percent. So six times fifty is three billion a year. So essentially, the cash flow of EMC paid for all of the debt. So the math gets to be pretty simple. It's like Michael can buy EMC, he can consolidate EMC, and he, quote, gets VMware for free. Just look at it from a simple math. I mean, other than the fact that it's $50 billion of debt of debt, the enormity and the size of that, you know, the deal is very straightforward, right? You know, buy EMC, the cash flows easily pay and pay down the debt uh, over time. You know, he has a very powerful strategic asset now with uh, VMware where he has the controlling interest. Obviously, you know, he presents part of that back to the you know, shareholders and the tracking stock. You know, but it's really a very straightforward transaction, right, from that to perspective. If, in fact, you can marshal $50 billion of debt, which he proved he was able to do. Right, you know, through the various tranches of debt, right, and then of course the tracking stock. We'll see how that goes in the marketplace. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting. You know, never before has there been quite the structure of a common and a, a tracking stock. It was funny. I was at a um, financial analyst dinner after the Morgan Stanley Investor Conference. So I'm here with uh, Zane, my CFO, and there's like 30 analysts in the room. And they start shelling me with questions about tracking stocks and why they did it and how it's going to work and all this kind of stuff. And after about the fifth question of tracking stocks, I turned to him. I said, now wait a minute. I'm a Stanford-trained engineer. You're Harvard-trained MBAs. Why am I telling you <laughs> 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 Guys do anyway, right? You know. Uh, but uh, you know, at that level, you know, it's a very straightforward transaction. Obviously, you know what you've heard Michael say is three things about VMware: we remain independent, right? He's committed to supporting our ecosystem, and he wants to accelerate our growth, right? So it's really, you know, from our perspective, you know, as, as I've described it, we're trading an E for a D. We had a majority shareholder named DMC. When the deal's done, I have a majority shareholder named Dell. You know, we had two public entities before the deal. When it's over, we have a private entity and a public entity. It makes it easier uh, as we go forward. And Dell will be able to accelerate VMware's growth. There's just a lot of places they have market reach, you know, able to, you know, drive sales for us. You know, we'll do some, you know, products like VxRail, other things like that, that they'll be able to leverage our technologies. So it really is pretty straightforward that way. And I'll say, you know, Michael has spent, you know, uh, you know he got here Sunday, and uh, he's here through tomorrow morning. You know, he's in awe of the VM world ecosystem. Yeah, I You know, he really is, right? You know, as he walks around, it's like, wow. And to some degree, you know, it's like, hmm, you know, this is working, right? It's being highly successful, et cetera. So I think, you know, he already was committed to our independence, our ecosystem acceleration, but he leaves even more so after uh, spending a bunch of time here this uh, week.